Hey guys, welcome back to my channel. So today's video is all about Il Maquillage. This is a revitalized brand. I think originally they were really big in the late 70s and 80s. And I recently started to see their name pop up on my Instagram feed. I started to see some videos being made about this brand and I was like, I feel like I know this name. And so I looked them up and I realized that they were big a while ago and now that they've kind of come back onto the scene. So they actually reached out to me and they actually asked me to pick out a few things that they could send me to try. So this video is not sponsored by Il Maquillage in any way, but they were kind enough to send me these products to use. So thank you very much to Il Maquillage for sending me over all of these wonderful goodies. So I just wanted to share these with you guys. And if you're interested in seeing me put on a whole bunch of their stuff from foundations to eyeshadows to lip color then just keep on watching so let's go ahead and start with their foundation this is the woke up like this flawless base foundation and uh, I've got one fluid ounce here I also see on the box here that it was made in Italy and let's see so this is what the bottle looks like and I have it in the shade 060. I believe this is supposed to be like a full coverage matte foundation. So this is basically a foundation that is very, very out of my comfort zone. Uh, I generally like lighter coverage foundations. I like foundations with radiance. So this will be very, very interesting, but I have washed and moisturized my face. So we'll see what happens. But if you check out the Il Maquillage site, you will notice that they have a lot of foundation shades, which is really, really nice to see. But on their website also, you'll see that like you can search by light by neutral like by different uh, tones and depths of skin tones so i thought that was really really cool their entire website is actually very well thought out so i really like their website they also have a boutique actually in soho and i think they're opening one up in miami so when i'm in new york next month i am definitely going to hit their boutique it's down in soho it's supposed to be beautiful at least the pictures of it are really beautiful it was designed by this very well-known architect so i'm excited to check out what they have in store because they have more in store than they do online so i wasn't able to get like a blush or a highlight because they didn't have that online but they do have those in store so if i like the stuff that i try today then i definitely want to try more so anyway back to the foundation uh it comes in a pump like this i'm just gonna pump some out on to the back of my hand. So here is 060. You can see it's slowly running down my hand. So that's the consistency. It's not too thick, uh, also not too thin. Kind of right in the middle. So I was a good girl and I washed my Sonia G Base One brush. So I'm gonna go ahead and start uh, dabbing this onto my face and I'll apply it to half of my face so we can see the difference. Um, how much coverage it actually gives us. I don't think it's fragrance necessarily, but it definitely smells, smells like old Chanel foundation, the way Chanel foundation used to smell like in the early 90s. I don't really mind it, but it kind of smells like, like a very toned down like paint smell. So I'm gonna go in with my Sonia G brush and blend this out. I think the shade is pretty good for my skin tone. And the 060 that I have, I think falls into like a light, neutral category for them. So with that amount that I put on, I don't think that this is actually a very full coverage foundation. I can still see the like red blotches that I have along my jawline here. I can still see some of my hyperpigmentation over here on my cheek. And by the way, they have 50, five zero different foundation shades. Uh, lightweight texture, buildable, medium to high coverage, natural matte finish, optically corrective powders enriched with vitamin E, hyaluronic acid, and 100% cruelty free. All right, so buildable medium to high coverage. All right, let me just finish applying this to at least half of my face here. All right, so I'm just taking a close look here. I do think the foundation is on the matter side. I wanna say it's kind of like a natural skin-like finish, maybe a little bit matter than that, than what I would consider to be a natural skin-like finish. The coverage is interesting though. Like I really don't think that there is a ton of coverage. I wanna say medium at most, but you can see uh, the difference there. And maybe you can see the difference on my cheeks my cheek area. So I'm gonna try and build up this side a little bit more before we move on to applying it to the entire face. I really wanna see if I can cover up the redness over here. So I'm gonna dab a little bit more. Definitely buildable. I feel like I got a medium to full coverage with that additional amount of foundation. I wanna say though, I feel like it's starting to look 
a little bit thick on my skin. So I'm definitely gonna stop there. I would not recommend building up beyond like two layers. I think it's gonna start to look a little cakey. I feel like I'm starting to see a little cakiness over here, like around my nose and these laugh lines here. So I'm gonna stop there <laughs> and I'm gonna go ahead and apply it to the rest of my face. So there it is all over my face. Definitely got it up to like a medium full coverage. I think um, as personal preference, the finish is definitely like a little bit too matte for me. I feel like it's making my skin look a little bit dry. Um, I feel like underneath my eyes, it's looking a little bit crepey. But I think if you like a matte finish, you know, medium to full kind of foundation, this could be a good option for you. So the rest of the products that I picked are either for your lips or your eyes. So I'm gonna go ahead and put on everything else and I'll be right back. So I, no surprise, uh, was interested in a lot of their eyeshadows. So I got one of their quads. This is their uh, Color Boss Squad, multi-dimensional eye color quad. And I got it in the shade Trendsetter, number 995. And this packaging is really luxe. It's very, very heavy. And it has, uh, it's very similar to the Tom Ford eyeshadow packaging. It has that bar in the front. Uh, but this is that quad. Let me just swatch these for you. Ooh. These feel very creamy, very, very creamy. So here's that eyeshadow quad. And then let me show you the other options we have. So they have these very large Color Boss Pro palettes where they have 12 multi-dimensional eye colors. And I got, what shade is this? This is Ready or Not. And it comes in this very interesting packaging. So it comes in a box and then inside the box you have the palette, but it's in this like plastic slip cover. And then you have the palette. And this is the Ready or Not palette. They have three versions of this Pro palette, so I picked out two. The one I didn't get is more of a warm toned, and since I had picked this quad out, I figured I don't need the warm toned one. But anyway, this is Ready or Not. And then these also come with a cover that's sort of like an iPad cover. Oh, I see. So, <laughs> wow, that took me a long time. So this uh, little top part here sits on top of the palette and then it kind of folds over on top of itself and then hangs over the front. So then the whole thing doesn't have to come off. It actually stays on and you can just fold it back and work with the palette. So pretty cool. So anyway, this is one of the pro palettes that I got. Let me show you the other one that I picked. I was a little bit more interested in this one um, only because it's pretty different in general and pretty different for me. So this is in the shade Not Afraid. And I thought this was really cool. I really like this gold color and this green, this blue, this turquoise. So these look like a lot of fun. Let me go ahead and throw the cover on there. And then I think we'll go ahead and use this Not Afraid palette just cause it's a little bit different. So let me start by actually swatching the shades in here for you. So I'm gonna go across the top and then down. I'll do four at a time. Very creamy. These feel just like the ones in the quad. I think they're supposed to be the same formula. So those are the first four. And these are all shimmer shades. And then let me do the next four. These are all shimmer shades as well. Wow, that one's really pretty. I was not expecting that. And then let's do this last row over here. I think I think these are mattes. Kind of hard to tell because they feel so creamy. It's kind of hard to tell, but I think these are all mattes. Let's see what the swatches look like. They're like a creamy matte. And I think I just made it. <laughs> So that's the last row. Yeah, they're like a matte shade, but because the texture of them is so creamy, there's just sort of this inherent kind of like sheen to them, but really pretty. All right, I'm gonna wipe these off and I'm gonna swatch the other big pro palette. 
the ready or not. All right, so I'll do the same thing. I'll start from the top and move down. I'll do four at a time. I really can't believe how creamy these feel. So here's the first row. Looks like this one is like one of those creamy matte formulas. The rest look like shimmers. Here's the first four. So this one looks to be like a foiled shade. This one looks to be like a satin, and then these two are like the creamy matte. So this black shade is the same one that was in the Not Afraid palette that I just swatched. Same black kind of creamy matte shade. Looks like this is the only like foiled shade. The rest look like creamy mattes. So this is the Ready or Not palette. Really pretty. All right, let's get serious. Let me take back out the Not Afraid. Gosh, I don't know. I don't know what to do. Um, I guess, I guess I'll start with this shade down here. I feel like this is going to be a little bit too deep for me. Maybe I'll try mixing it with this shade over here. I'll mix these two together. All right, I'm going to start by dipping into these two shades down here. And start on my outer corner and work that in. So far, blending like a dream. Wow, not patchy at all. Nice pigmentation. Okay, all right. So far, so good. I want to go into one of these really, really fun shades. How about this green over here? This green, this bright green. I'm going to use my Isom uh, Sable hairbrush because I want a lot of impact. This is the W23. It's like a flat shader. And I'm going to go into this crazy green. And I'm going to put this along my lash line. Oh, wow. Okay. And then up towards my socket line. Wow. Wow. I'm a little bit speechless right now. That is so beautiful. That applied so easily. I was a little bit worried. I was a little bit worried for such a deep, dark, vibrant color. You just never know what's gonna happen. <laughs> and you need just so little there's no building up or anything like bam that is it all right let's let's try the other eye let's make sure this was not a fluke so you know what's interesting is I'm, I'm putting these on I'm swatching them or whatever and I feel like they're almost like a creamier version of the Natasha Denona shadows and those shadows are creamy these are these feel almost creamier and I'm looking at the ingredients the first ingredient is mica the second one is that synthetic floor flogopite and I think that is also what's used in the Natasha Denona shadows and these are also made in Italy if you like really creamy pigmented shadows I mean some people prefer like more powdery shadows but if you like really creamy pigmented shadows, I think you should give these a shot. So far, these are really out of this world. Yes, I've only used three, but let's dive in and try another one. All right, I'm gonna go into this kind of taupey shimmer shade, and I'm gonna put that uh, on the inner portion of my lid, and I wanna see how nicely it blends into the green. I'm just gonna go in with the same Isom brush. I'm having a little bit of issue with this shadow and that brush combination. It's getting a little bit of hard pan, and I'm not able to pick up much product. Let me just show you. Can you see? So there's a little bit of hard pan there. Let me go in with a denser brush. I'm gonna try one of my Sonia G Builder brushes. So these Sonia G Builder brushes, they usually cut right through hard pan, doesn't usually bother them. So I'm gonna give this a shot. This is the Builder 2 brush, the bigger one. And I'm just going to put that on the pan and shimmy it. And it does look like it is successfully picking up a lot more product than that uh, Isom brush. So let's see how much impact I have. I think that's the one danger with really creamy, creamy eyeshadows is that they're going to develop a hard pan. Oh, they blend really nicely together. Wow. 
well, these shadows blend beautifully together. I'm really excited about these eyeshadows right now. I'm gonna go in with a liner brush and I'm gonna use this cobalt blue shade and I'm gonna line my upper and lower lash line with that. I'm just trying to figure out what brush I wanna use. I'm just gonna use my liner brush from Tom Ford. This is the number 14 brush. Again, I'm gonna go into that blue shade. There was a teensy bit of fallout with that blue, but in general, there really it hasn't been that much fallout. I don't really see that much on my cheeks or anything. Wow, I am super impressed by these shadows. These are really, really nice. The only downfall again is that this one developed a little bit of hard pan. I don't really see that. Maybe this gold one, it's kind of starting to happen, but really gorgeous and really easy to use. I am still, I'm really blown away by how nicely they blended together. All right, what other eye stuff do I have in here? I think I have two eyeliners. Yes, I got two long wear eye pencils. One is in Sylvester and one is in Metallica. This is, so this one is Metallica. So there is a metallic sheen to it. It's like a dark gray. Well, that's really pretty. These are really soft too. And then this one is Sylvester. Ooh, fun. I'm very, very intrigued by the Sylvester, but I think I'll use the Metallica. All right, let's see if it smudges at all as I do my other eye. All right, so far so good, so far so good. Sometimes if eyeliner smudge, they will do it before they set down like as I'm blinking, but no smudging. All right, and then the rest of, is, it, is that possible? Yes, the rest of these products are uh, lip products. So I have, oh no, I have an eyebrow product. I forgot about this. So this is the Fill and Fix Brow Shaper. I got it in the shade Espresso. I think it's their darkest one. And this is kind of like a brow gel. And you guys know me and my like fiber brow gels. So this is the little tube that it comes in. Super teeny tiny wand. But this brow gel seems a little bit wet. All right, there are my eyebrows. Um, I think it did a decent job. The end result is fine, but I felt like I had to be really careful with it because it is uh, a little bit wet. It's of a wetter formula. And I really like my Tom Ford Fiber Brow Gel, as you guys know, because it's a little bit drier. And it's almost mistake proof. Like you can go in really hard, but you just kind of keep brushing it out and it's fine. When they're really wet, I feel like I can make a mess like really easily. So. All right, let's move on to lips. So let's see, what did I get? I got uh, one of their Longwear Matte Lip Creams and I got it in the shade Infinity Matte Dreamy. And the packaging on this is impressive. This is a glass and it's kind of heavy uh, for a matte lip cream, but let's go ahead and swatch this. It's got one of those paddle applicators. Here is this color. It's a little bit uh, peachier than I wanted. I wanted something a little bit more nude, so maybe not this one today. And then I also got two of their super sheer lip colors and I got one in the color Cabo and one in Honolulu. They look like chubby pencils and they actually retract up and down, which is really nice. This is the color Cabo, very, very nude. Don't know if it's gonna to be too nude for me, but there is Cabo. I thought that would be fine since these are supposed to be on the sheer side. The other one is Honolulu. This looks really up my alley. So, this, so there is Honolulu. Cabo and there's the matte lip cream. It doesn't seem like the matte lip cream is drying down completely. It still seems like it's a little bit tacky. So maybe it's one of those that's meant to be a little bit more comfortable on the lips and doesn't dry down totally. And none of these lip products have any scent, which is good for me. And then I also got one of their lip liners. This is in the color coffee and these lip liners are waterproof. Okay, coffee. Does seem like it's gonna be a good match for this matte lip cream and maybe this Honolulu. All right, so I'm gonna put on this lip liner and then decide which lipstick I wanna go with. 
All right, I'm just dying to try one of these uh, super sheer lip colors. So I'm gonna use the Honolulu color. Oh, I like that. Mm, just enough pigmentation, not too much, not too little. And it feels really nice. It's very, very comfortable. Little bit of a sheen there, nothing too like high gloss. Oh, I like these. All right, so that is it for today's video. Let me just kind of sum up quickly some of the things that really stood out to me. The eyeshadows, I think, are amazing. I think you guys probably could tell that I was pretty excited about them, but I think the pigmentation is amazing. They're very creamy. They're really easy to blend. Super impressed with them. I really like this uh, sheer, super sheer lip color. I love uh, a nice chubby pencil because I just think it makes it so easy to use. And I like the colors that I picked, Honolulu and Cabo. I think these are gonna be really nice, easy to wear everyday shades. And oh, I really liked the eyeliner. I like these colors, they're a little bit different and they went on really, really easily and really gorgeous. One thing I was not the biggest fan of is this uh, Fill & Fix Brow Shaper. I think it's a little bit too wet. I think that's a personal thing. If you don't mind wet, this could probably work for you. I'm not the biggest fan of that. And this foundation, while I think it looks okay, I am just personally not a fan of the matter kind of finish. And as far as matte foundations go, I think it actually is pretty nice. I don't look too corpse-like or too powdery, but I do feel like if you suffer from dry skin the way I do, it's just, it's not gonna do anything for your skin. Like, I just feel like I look very flat and a little bit lifeless in terms of my complexion. If you guys wanna see more looks with all the other palettes that I got, then just let me know down below in the comment section. I definitely want to keep playing with them. So I hope you enjoyed this video. Give it a thumbs up if you did. Subscribe down below if you haven't already, and I'll see you in my next video.